If you want, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is going to be my January wrap up. I'm going to be talking about all the books that I've read this month and there are a lot. Uh, I mentioned it quickly in my TBR, but I got super sick, like stomach bacteria, antibiotics had to be taken and I'm feeling much better. But for a long time during a month, I was stuck pretty much in bed doing not much except reading. So I have 18 books to talk about, which is absolutely insane. Two of them though are books that I DNF'd but I still wanted to talk about them, especially one because I didn't read a lot of it but it was part of one of my challenges so I had to uh, let you know how I felt about it. So let's go in order that I've read them because it's gonna be a really long one. Uh, the first one, technically I only had 50 pages left but I always count the book when I finish it. So The Stone Sky by M.K. Jemisin. This is the last book in the Broken Earth trilogy. And I wanted to just mention that the third book was good. I feel like the second book in the trilogy was kind of the weakest point and the first one made it to my best of 2018 so I don't want to go too much in detail but basically fantasy, post-apocalyptic and very unique and the third book was worth struggling through book two so I gave it 4.5 stars and I just want to mention also last year I was looking at my stats and like throughout the whole year on Goodreads I had 12 books that made it to my five stars rating, basically five stars or like sometimes 4.5, I'll round it up on there. I had 12 for the whole year and this one I have six. So things decent, very decent. The next book was the first book I was planning on reading this year, hoping slash knowing I would love it. and. Definitely was the case. This is Skyward by Brenda Sanderson. This is a new series by him. There are gonna be four books. This is book one. Book two is coming out in November. This is a YA sci-fi and it's a little complicated so buckle up. In this world you're following the Defiant people. They're basically humans that uh, while in space escaped some aliens. There were some battles happening and they made it to this specific small planet that isn't necessarily the best for humans but they can survive there and uh, they're constantly attacked by aliens that are trying to fight back and they're struggling to do so because uh, of the frequency and there's only so many people that can actually become pilots. So basically uh, everyone is important there but everyone kind of looks up to pilots because they're the people that are fighting back and you're following the story of a young girl whose uh, her dad was a pilot but something happened throughout a battle and he escaped and being a coward is the worst thing you can be when you're part of defiant people. So uh, her dad was labeled and killed uh, because he was a coward and then she is labeled as the daughter of a coward. So her goal in life is to also become a pilot and to clear her dad's name or at least prove that she's not like him. And the main character is a little abrasive but it makes complete sense considering her story and there's definitely a lot of growth throughout the book. And uh, I really enjoyed all the battles. I enjoyed uh, a lot of the characters, especially the sentient ship that there's going to be in there. Uh, shout out also to Doomslug, my man. Uh, and yeah, it was a very, very interesting book. And what I like the most about uh, Brendan Sanderson is that he's great at world building and uh, he always ends his book with a boom. And it doesn't feel forced at all, but I feel like sometimes when it's a big series and they end with like a huge cliffhanger, I just get frustrated because I have to wait one, two, three years to get to the next one. And at that point, I'm just frustrated about it. But this one, yes, there's like, you know, there's a little boom at the end. There is some information that is at least given to you, so it's satisfying enough. And then book two is coming out in November, but still, I'm very happy about this. It was really, really fun. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Totally recommend it. Again, why sci-fi? I was a little nervous because my least favorite book by him so far was the first book in the Reckoner series because the main character is a teenage boy and the romance is so cringy. I could not deal. There's no romance in there. Actually, he said that he was trying to put one in there and then he realized it made no sense to so remove it and I'm like, <laughs> so happy. So yeah, I think I'm gonna end it there. I could say so much more, but just totally recommend it. Gave it five stars. Loved it. I have so many books to talk about, we need to move on. Uh, next book I need to talk about is Record of a Spain's Spaceborn Few by Becky Chambers. This is book three in the, is it Wayfarer series? Um, I have the two first book right here. I feel like a lot of people always talk about the first one, which is The Long Way to Small Angry Planet. This is a book that I highly recommend when people want to get into sci-fi and they're usually more like a why contemporary reader type of thing uh, because there's a great amount of diversity and uh, 
it's kind of very wholesome. <laughs> and I definitely recommend this one. This is my favorite in the whole series. Um, book two is still pretty good. You do have to read book one to read it. They're all companion novels, but you need to start by book one to read the other ones. But you don't need to re read book two to read book three, still. In this one, you're following the remnant of humanity, um, how they're struggling to be part of this whole new world where there's a bunch of aliens and they are so far away, like technology-wise, and they're barely like surviving in their ship. And there's also like little stories in the ship, coming of age, being accepted. There's also some representation. I believe the author might be lesbian and that might be why she's so good at this because th there was a relationship in there and it felt very, very genuine. It didn't feel forced at all. Um, the problem is that not much happens and I know some people love that in a book, but it just felt a bit flat. With that said, I found this book kind of relaxing, even though there's some like things happening that are not necessarily uh, enjoyable and fun. But yeah, I find her book kind of relaxing. Her writing is great for that. So this one, I'm kind of on the fence rating wise, like 3.5 maybe. It wasn't great, but I have such a hard time rating her books. And I swear I'm not the only one. I went back to see reviews and everyone is kind of left a little like, eh. There wasn't enough substance in the book, but I still enjoyed the universe and I still kind of want more. I don't know. I guess it was kind of disappointing. The next one wasn't though. Ah, finally got my hands and was able to read Vengeful by V.E. Schwab. This is book two in the villains duology. Book one was Vicious and we waited, I think it was like five years in between the books. Although I did read book one in 2016, so I didn't wait as long as other people. Ah, uh, this was so good. Uh, I liked book one, but like I didn't understand why everyone loved it so so much. Like it was a good read, but it wasn't a favorite. This is a favorite. Like this is like so a favorite. <laughs> in this university following mainly uh, two friends who met in university and they found a way to develop superpowers, but instead of becoming superheroes, they kind of become super villains. And that was like pretty much the first book. In this one, there's obviously way more of those super powerful people. They call themselves EOs, but um, my favorite part in the book was the new supervillain was a female character. And honestly, you kind of find yourself rooting for her. <laughs> she, she has some good points. In the beginning, you're starting by following her and I haven't been gripped this hard, this quickly in a book in a long time. And she really had great motives and everything. I feel like sometimes villains, you're like questioning, okay, how did they become supervillains. Like it feels like they're just there to be a supervillain. And I feel like there's definitely more depth into her characters. And you get a lot of backstory also between the two main characters that I mentioned. The chapter, the chapters are very, very short. So I feel like it really forces you to like keep going, keep going. You can't put the book down. I read this so quickly. And I also like how it starts, is it like a couple weeks now? I need to like, have, yeah, six weeks. So it starts like six weeks ago and then you go back to like that day. So I think that's the type of like format that I enjoy quite a bit. And yeah, again, I'm gonna leave it at that because it is book two, but I can't recommend this enough. I really, really loved book two. I gave it five stars and I don't do that often. Again, last year I gave it like, max 12 times. This is a five stars also. The next book that I finished was our big book of the month for the Fox Book Club, which I'll link down below. If you don't know, you get to read a big book with me every month. And this month I had picked from the little Harry Potter jar, The, uh, the Passage by Justin Cronin. And I went into it only knowing that it was like kind of post-apocalyptic with vampires. And yeah, it is vampires, but it's not like those blood-sucking classic sparkly <laughs> vampires and there was a lot more about like kind of post-apocalyptic really than uh, just that and I have to say this is a big book like there's what like 700 and something pages 766 or something like that so this is a really really big book I kind of went back and forth between reading it and listening to it as an audiobook the other book was fine um I have to say my first reaction when I was done with it was that I felt exhausted. I am telling you, this feels like you're reading a whole trilogy because you get a before kind of during and then like after mostly like post-apocalyptic and it really like you end up following different characters 
mostly throughout all of this. So I feel like you always have to like start over. And in the beginning you're following like, you don't know where the story's going and you follow a certain group and then you go to a different one. And I don't know, personally I found it way, way more <laughs> exhausting than I thought I would. And I really want to try to explain the story, but <laughs> it's really complicated. Long story short, uh, some a group of people find a disease that d they want to use to cure everything. It seems to just cure everything. But uh, things go wrong and it kind of develops vampires and, you know, eventually it spreads everywhere in the world. I have a complicated relationship with this book, like I was saying. Very exhausting. There were some interesting parts, especially the beginning and the during. But I was really, I felt quite disconnected with the characters in the after, which was like most of the book. I'm gonna put it down because it's so heavy. But um, I don't know. I just was struggling to really care eventually because there were so many characters. I was laughing at one point because one of the villains in the after, like during slash after post apocalyptic, I guess, uh, called the women like females and like one of the characters thinking how that sounds like they're cows and stuff. <laughs> and honestly, it feels like the author was uh, before its time. Um, but I don't know. I'm having the hardest time reading this book. And I feel like in the book club, People are super divided. People either absolutely loved it and like went and read the whole trilogy in one month and then some people could not get through it or also felt exhausted at the end. And I'm just, I'm kind of torn. So I ended up giving it a 3.5. It was good. I do want to continue it's a trilogy, but I, I'm, I'm not in a rush. I'm like really not in a rush. I, yeah, I feel like the more I like have time to think about it, the more mad I am about it. I did start watching a TV show. At this point, I think I have watched two episodes and so far so good. So that might be an alternative if you don't want to commit to the whole book. Then I read Childhoods End by Arthur C. Clarke, which is a classic sci-fi. I do like to try and read some once in a while. And I have, again, a complicated relationship with sci-fi, cla classic sci-fi, because first off, they're usually kind of short, like 200 and something pages, but they take me so long to go through and I feel like so far I have found them quite dated and I kind of don't understand why everyone puts them in their list of favorites. Like you get to a point sometimes that you're like, are you just saying that it's a favorite because you feel like you have to or do you actually, I don't know, I, I don't want to judge anyone, but like it kind of becomes a little like that. Uh, in this one, once again, I feel like the story was like kind of divided in like sections. I really like the beginning, basically uh, aliens arrive they start calling them the overlords and they help humanity solve like everything and they tell them that after x amount of years they will show them show themselves uh which is like when they do it's not a spoiler but when they do it's kind of shocking their appearance and everything which i did enjoy that part and then it becomes like in the future which was okay and then the last part was like just weird and i understand it's a, like the concepts in a lot of classics are like it's weird because obviously aliens would be you know, it would feel alien to us. And I got it for like something like Sol Solaris, which again, wasn't the most enjoyable read, but I really enjoyed the concept. In this one, I only enjoyed the beginning, to be quite honest. It did feel uh, dated at times, obviously, with uh, sexism and racism. Like it wasn't full on super intense. I've definitely read way, way worse. I feel like sometimes it just takes you out of a story. Like I'm aware they will be a bit dated, it makes sense, but sometimes it's actually funny because one section I put a post-it because they were saying how like there was so much like radio and TV and everything and how like people went up to uh, reading, was it how much time? Like they would spend like three hours or something a day in front of a screen and I'm like, <laughs> we're doing way worse now. Uh, but yeah, that, would, that was like the only time I lost the whole book. So uh, yeah, very complicated relationship. Shit got weird at the end, like straight up weird, weird. And there is a TV show slash kind of a three part movie, uh, like three episodes of like an hour and something. I watched two, eh, it's okay. Once again, I kind of just have a really complicated relationship with a lot of these. So I gave it three stars. I wouldn't reread it. It's not something I would even really recommend, but if you are interested in reading it, do it, I guess. I'm not really selling it, but like, I was a little, not just a little, I, will, I was disappointed, not just a little. Uh, one of the books I needed to read for my Goodreads reading challenge, which once again, 
I'll link down below if you want to uh, participate and try and do it with me, was to read Elevation by Stephen King, which is a short story that won for the category of horror, which is uh, it, it's not a horror book. Basically, people voted for it because Stephen King. Um, in this short story, it's like a hundred and something pages, so really like an hour and a half you can read it. Uh, it's more of a fantasy. You're following a man who, like a classic, it starts a classic grumpy old neighbor in a little town and um, he doesn't get along with his neighbors who are lesbians and um, he starts kind of going through something weird. He starts losing weight, but like he could have like rocks in his pocket and go on the scale and nothing changes. Every day he loses more and more weight until what's gonna happen when he has like he gets to zero. Like it felt quite a bit like oh like this red town uh hating on the bad bad lesbian couple like worse because not only not only are they in love but they're married lesbian like the worst kind, causing drama in the little town, and there were some good moments, like obviously Stephen King is not a bad writer. It just felt a little kind of preachy, and it just didn't sit well with me, like, I don't know, like, I hated the ending, which made it a thousand times worse, but I always say that with a Stephen King book, so really I shouldn't be surprised, but fell flat even if you want to say that, like, oh, you know, little Republican town realize that lesbians are not evil type of like, plot. So yeah, read it if you must, but I'm hoping I can find something better in that category that will win when I do my own little award at the end of the year. Then I read uh, 21 Lessons for the 21st Century by Yuval Noah Harari. I read Sapiens last year and I have actually started this book too last year when I was in the plane and they would not start, so I had the only book I had on my phone was this one. The first couple of chapters are interesting because it's mostly technological, which is what I was interested in. Um, basically, some of the challenges that will happen slash things we will need to adapt for uh, in the upcoming, you know, years. And that part was really interesting, but then the rest of the book was a flop for me. Uh, there was quite a bit of politics, which I'm not a big fan of, and a lot of religion, which again, don't really care to read about. And it kind of felt like it's fairly obvious how the author feels about all of these things. It was obvious even in Sapien. And Sapien was just a little bit, so I didn't really mind, but I felt like half of the book was about him bashing religion, which, again, I don't really care, but it just, it wasn't interesting to me. And even the title being like 21 Lessons, it's not 21 Lessons, it's 21 chapters and... Yeah, the first half was like overshadowed by the second one, so I ended up giving it 3, 3.5. I don't know, if you have any recommendations for what I mentioned in the beginning, like things that we need to adapt for the future, maybe a second book, Omodeus, I didn't read that one yet, so I'll, I'll read that, hopefully that solves that craving, but I ended up being kind of disappointed once again. Next, I read another book that I am absolutely in love with, and it is... Grey Sister by Mark Lawrence. Uh, this is book two in the Ancestor <laughs> series. Book one was Red Sister, which made it to my best of 2018, so unsurprisingly, book two is also five stars for me. I love this universe. Um, you're following a bunch of very interesting female characters, which is like, finally. Um, it's kind of, a, once again, a mix of fantasy and post-apocalyptic. The people that are living on this planet came all down from four different groups of people that have different kind of like magical powers. Some people are like huge and super strong, some people can use like shadows and there's a bunch of very interesting magic system there and uh, you follow a character who is part of a school which is run by nuns and to become a nun she has to learn all of these things and I mean badass fighting nuns, yes please. I really enjoyed uh, a lot of their relationships, whether they hate each other or whether they are friendly or in a relationship. Um, it's just so refreshing to have a bunch of different characters that have some depth. And like, you know, that there's that like thing where uh, if you can replace your female character by like a sexy lamp that you need to rewrite it. It didn't feel like that at all. And I really appreciated how for once there's not like a special snowflake reason for a female character to be all small and pretty. You know what I mean? It gets so exhausting and to get that 
literally written in the book that they have muscle and they're like six foot tall and they're like fighting and they're eating so obviously they're gaining muscle and it was like a breath of fresh air and I'm really uh, intrigued by all the things that will happen obviously I can't say too much again book two but um yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I also actually read, uh, I think it's called Bound, which is a short story in between this one and book three, which is coming out in April, and I'm like dying to read it. Uh, that one, it's kind of <laughs> summarized as a kissing story. I'm not, there's kind of a like murder mystery in that universe, and there is somewhat of a romance. And I have been very vocal about my hate of romance. And the thing is, my issue with romance is because I feel like it's usually badly done, at least in my eyes, in the sense that it's like a bunch of love triangle that you don't care about because you just met the characters, or uh, that they just don't make sense, a bunch of uh, love at first sight, insta love, and it just, I, I just don't have time to care. And I feel like at this point I read two books, so to have a short story afterwards where there may be some love interest there, I'm okay with this. I'm like shipping the crap out of, out of two of these people, out of three, and kind of love triangle, but uh, I'm really hoping the people I'm shipping will end up together. And um, yeah, the, the short story was really good. I enjoyed it. I gave it 4.5 stars and yeah, <laughs> I'm going to end there because it's super short. I can't really say anything. Then I did a thing. I said I wasn't going to read this book and then I read this book. So uh, In an Absent Dream by Shannon McGuire. This is bo book four in the We Were Children series. After book three, I was like, you know what? This is it. I am done. I'm always disappointed by her books. I feel like every single, my struggle, at least every single time I read one of her books, because I've read like six or something at this point, and every time I find the premise incredibly interesting, I love her writing. She's great at it, but there's never any substance. And in these shorter books like this, I feel like every time the action would start, you get a, so a year later when they came back and survived, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, really? I just like miss out on all the shit I was caring about. <laughs> and a lot of that stuff happens in that series. It did happen in this one too, but it is by far my favorite of the whole thing. I love the magical world. I didn't really mention it, but I feel like at this point everyone knows, but uh, it's basically kids that go to magical worlds, think like Alice in Wonderland type of thing. And this is my favorite one. This one is ruled like by logic and everything needs to be fair. And again, the writing was excellent and I really enjoyed it. It would have been a five stars if for once you would have seen like a little part of the action, you know? Like that's like the one thing that's missing. But uh, if you have read the first three books and you're like, eh, read the fourth one. You may like it, you may not, but it's my favorite. So I gave it four stars. Okay, the next book is a book that's not coming out until like this summer. But I will mention it again at that time, but I read an arc, which is like rare for me. And I wanted to read this one because it's by Blake Crouch. <laughs> and if you don't know, I have a complicated relationship with his work. I love his new works like um, Dark Matters and the Wherever Pine series, but I hated his older stuff like uh, Good Behavior and Run. Like hated them, like literally bashed them. So like, it was funny how like half of the books made it to my best of and then the other half my worst of. So I was kind of nervous but hopeful that I would enjoy uh, Recursion. Rec recursion. Re recursion. I'll put it on the screen. Um, so this one is a little complicated to describe which seems to be the case with a lot of books that I enjoy. But I do want to mention that I still think his weakness is his characters and dialogues. I feel like sometimes they're a little too forced and in the books that I really didn't enjoy I felt like they were straight up painful. Uh, they still weren't my favorite part of the beginning, but things improved so much by the end. The characters started finally to become less 2Ds and just being more interesting and developing a better like relationship between the characters and everything. But let's go with the premise because that's what you want to know. It's kind of a uh, dystopian version of a world where uh, people start having false memories and it seems to be contagious and like someone can decide, can wake up one day and uh, like you were married to this guy, but then this guy is married to someone else, and like, why do you remember that lifetime and then this lifetime? Like, what happened? And then you're also following a neurosurgeon who's trying to develop a way to help the memory of people that have Alzheimer, like her mom. And the beginning was interesting. I would have given it like maybe 3.5, but then about like halfway through the book, things got really good. Like, 
really good. And I really can't say much more without ruining it for you. So I'm just gonna say if you've read his other work and you like the mix of like thriller sci-fi, I would pick up the book. I would give it a shot. And if you find the beginning a bit slow, I didn't find it slow, but if you find it a bit slow, just continue. Absolutely worth it. Like eventually, like you'll get to a point and things pick up and become amazing. Loved it. And it is becoming, I don't know if it's a movie or a TV show. I feel like I've seen both, but it's being picked up by Netflix and I am living for this. I am so hoping that they're going to do a great job at it because the second half so solid. I can't wait to talk about it with you when you guys read it. So uh, it ended up being like a 4.25 maybe stars uh, because the second half really brought it up for me. So yeah, I'm gonna end it there because again, I think it's coming out in July. Let me check the exact date. June 11th. I knew it was summer. Um, so I definitely recommend it. I'll talk about it again in June. But it's the type of book that, you know how this one, I feel like the more time goes by, the passage, the least I enjoyed it. This one is the opposite. The more time passes, the more I'm like, yeah, that was good. I need to recommend this. I need to watch this when it comes out type of thing. So, so that one was a thumbs up. Then I listened to the audiobook of Becoming by Michelle Obama. And this nonfiction book has been like going everywhere. And I'm usually not huge on like memoir, but uh, this one I really wanted to read it because everyone was talking about it. And it's kind of part of my challenge for the good read one, kind of. But mostly I just wanted to read it. And the book is sectioned in three parts. The first one is like her uh, her growing up and then her uh, becoming in relationship with Obama and then being like first lady and everything. And I really enjoyed the book because I got to get to know her obviously quite a bit more. She's the one narrating the audiobooks too, which I do recommend listening to. And I, yeah, got to know a lot more about her, her education, her career, and how she, uh, her first uh, impression of uh, Barack Obama was not positive, which I thought was hilarious. And even through her writing, you find him very touching and very charismatic, and so is she. I didn't know that she actually wasn't a fan of politics and how she didn't actually really want to let him go into that. Obviously, she wasn't planning on stopping him or anything, but I'm just saying how she, she wasn't really into it. And um, I'm just going to say that the contrast between how much her and her husband care about people and how they put so much work into their work uh, is kind of very, very different from the actual current political environment. So uh, I'm going to stop here, but I definitely recommend uh, this book if you were looking at it. Totally worth it. Definitely recommend the audiobook. Again, she's the one narrating it. Next book did not go so well. It's the first book that I put down. It is The Last Black Unicorn by Tiffany uh, Haddish. This one was the winner in the category Best Humor, so that's the reason I was picking it up. I had seen her in one movie and she did fine. I liked her voice enough to listen to her uh, doing the audiobook. She's the one narrating it. And I did not DNF a book this quickly, like ever. Usually like if I DNF a book this quickly, it's because I can't stand the uh, narration. Like I'll just pick up the book instead. I hated the book so quickly. And like, I've been telling myself like, you're crazy. You should go back and listen to it again because like you just didn't give it a fair sh chance. And like, I literally cannot bring myself to do it. It's supposed to be like a funny memoir, but I was really having a hard time enjoying her trying to make a joke out of like straight up abuse she went through and like it left me just feeling kind of icky like I really can't like literally go uh, either on your library or like audible or something and listen to like a sample of that book and you'll understand like I just could not go through it I listened to 30 minutes and put it down I never do that I usually like listen to like half a book or read half a book before like putting it down and I couldn't do it I went to look at reviews afterwards and a lot of people were having issues about some of the things she does, like making fun of people that are, um, I think it was people were saying that someone was fat and then someone was, like things like that. And anyway, um, yeah, I'm just giving up completely on that one. I just can't deal. I then listened to Sadie by Courtney Summers and this one was the one that won for like the YA contemporary or contemporary fiction, whatever, section. And I have to say that was actually quite original. The premise of the books, like actually the format of the book is through podcasts and 
I thought that was kind of original. The main character is actually uh, someone with a stutter, which I don't see often. And since I listened to it as an audiobook, I could actually listen to her stuttering, which again, not something I have listened to often. It's not something we get often, so great representation for that. And I was wanted to say, oh my god, I've been talking for so long. Basically, the story is about a missing girl who went missing after her sister uh, died. And I can't say a lot because it's not like super action-packed type of book. It's kind of on the short side. But I'm going to say that I thought that it was kind of refreshing how the main character uh, had a rough upbringing. Up upbringing. The author was not shy on the abuse details and I feel like very often in fiction, whether it's like fantasy or contemporary um, why especially, when a character is poor, they like magically still go on adventures and become rich or mad, like money doesn't matter to everything and it didn't feel like that. It definitely felt raw and dark and I can't say... I usually rate a book based on my enjoyment and I have a hard time doing it for this one. I gave it four stars because I can't bring myself to give it five stars because like it was not a fun read I guess uh yeah again I read a lot of books that were like part of those challenges so I feel like they're so out of my comfort zone that sometimes I just struggle to give them rating but uh, I understand why people raved about it Um, the beginning was a bit slow I'm just gonna say that but yeah solid read uh, if you're into why contemporary Give this one a shot if you can stomach it. Speaking of not being able to stomach it, this one I almost put down because I couldn't deal with it and it is Educated by Tara Westover. This one is a memoir of a girl who grew up uh, part of a uh, survivalist family in Idaho. Yes, Idaho. And uh, you kind of hear about her story being homeschooled, aka she didn't really learn anything and then how she ended up escaping this to become someone with a PhD and everything. And the amount of abuse in this book was really, really difficult to listen to. Um, at one point, like I was saying, like halfway point through the book, I almost put it down because I just could not deal with it anymore. It's very, very raw and dark. I understand why um, it's such a popular read. And then afterward I went and was looking at some reviews and some people were saying how the family is saying that oh that's not really what happened, like none of that crap happened and it's like what were you expecting? Like the family will that put her through so much physical and emotional mental abuse will not just stop being manipulative and lying and pretending that oh yeah we totally did all that stuff to her. Anyway, um, yeah. I'm gonna say if you've been through any of those things, it's gonna be very, very rough. That book definitely made me uncomfortable. Um, yeah, not gonna lie. Some of the parts where she's like pretty much brainwashing into telling herself that like, oh, you know, I probably like misremembered, things probably didn't happen that way, um, you know, it's not that bad and everything, it hit a little too close to home in my case. Uh, the next book that I did DNF at like 56%, I believe, was Nine Perfect Strangers by Leanne Moria. And I read and loved Big Little Lies, I feel like everyone has. I feel like the characters were so attaching and even though like it's not usually my type of book, like if you're following a group of mom with kids that are like in kindergarten, so it's like really not my type of books usually, but I could not put it down because I care so much about the characters. So I was super excited to read her newest book and biggest flop ever. I don't know if she was trying to show that she could write characters that are not likable, but I feel like that was the best part in her other books. So I feel like this made me already kind of disappointed. And the characters, I just didn't really care about them. And I hated how she kept bashing one of the characters Basically a group of like kind of messed up people go to this uh, place where they, uh, you know, no more phones and they have to drink those shakes and you know, they'll get all better. Um, one of those characters is in Instagram model and like the amount of like judgment that you know the author <laughs> is doing like, oh she got plastic surgery, she's so insecure and like it just got too much because every single time she was mentioned it was stuff like that and it was like, okay, like let's move on, we get it, you hate them. It just like it could not be more of a stereotype, right? And like there's like somewhat of a twist, I guess, just before I put it down where I was like, 
I, I just don't care. Like, I just don't care. This book is literally shit. And like, I don't say that easily, but I couldn't care less. I was listening to it as an audiobook and that's the only reason I made it this far. Like there's no way I would have went through half the book otherwise. It just, no redeeming quality to, for me. So do not recommend or do so and let me know how you felt about it. Another book for my Goodreads reading challenge. I feel like I'm doing so well, but that's how it is, right? You start a new challenge, you do super well and then less and less and less and less throughout the year. So I thought, you know, might as well start on a high. Uh, I read the Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. Acevedo. Uh, the author is the daughter of two Dominican uh, immigrants. And it's kind of, I think it's just inspired by her life because she's a single child. And then um, in the book, she has a twin brother. So I think it's mostly inspired. The book won the award for best poetry of 2018 on Goodreads. That's why I was picking it up. No, actually I'm lying. It's, it was number two. But uh, number one, I can't find it in my library, so I thought I, I would start with number two since everyone was telling me it was supposed to be better. So I did enjoy it. Uh, poetry is not my job. I highly recommend listening to it as an audiobook. Uh, there were quite a bit of Spanish in the book, which I wasn't expecting. I do not speak Spanish, but everything was translated right away. So at first I was like, oh no, I won't understand half the book, but then no worries. Uh, I do feel like it made it more uh, her, I suppose, and um, I ended up enjoying it so much more than expected. Like once again, it took me a little while to get attached to the character, but then I really, really cared about the story. And once again, uh, a lot of drama between the family. Uh, the family's obviously more conservative, they're Christian. They're having trouble letting her grow up basically as a woman and how she's struggling herself. Again, a lot of abuse in my opinion. I feel like, Okay, uh, my pet peeve with the book is that I hated the ending, like, 100%. Like, when everything finishes with a nice bow, it pisses me off because it didn't feel genuine with the story at all. And I don't know if it's, like, the true relationship she has with her parents, but I thought it was, like, 100% abusive. And I will spoil, spoil the ending, talk about it, so come back once the book is not on the screen anymore. But holy shit, can I just complain about the fact that, like, once again, oh yeah, I, I feel totally fine with my family after my mom freaking burned the most important thing in my life and now they're perfectly uh, accepting my new boyfriend. Anyway, uh, hated the ending, liked the book, so I ended up giving it four stars. And that's it, those are the 18 books that I've read this month. This was the longest freaking video ever. I, I hope I gave still enough details to uh, let you decide if you want to read the books yourself or not. Please feel free to discuss them with me in the comment section. And if there's anything else you want to know, just ask away and I will just, actually, I'll link down below also my Goodreads if you want to uh, read more about my thoughts. But yeah, I need to stop talking. My throat is killing me. I had a good reading one. Like there's only been like two that I really hated, a few disappointment, but like overall great ratings, at least to me. So uh, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and to subscribe because you definitely don't want to miss any future videos. I am doing a reading vlog very, very soon, so be excited. And I will see you in my next video. I'll put some more videos on the screen. And yeah, I'll see you there. Bye.